Hello Aquarius. Welcome to my channel. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And this is your love taroscope for the month of May. And I am using the Morgan Greer Tower deck and we're, do we're doing the Celtic Cross spread. And I just want to say thank you everyone for subscribing to my channel, for liking the videos and commenting. I appreciate all your comments and um, your support. Thank you so much. So before I begin, let me call in the angels with this beautiful bell. Isn't this just precious? I just love this bell. Okay. Let me just get centered a minute. What is coming up for May for Aquarius? What does Aquarius need to know about their love life in the month of May? What is coming up in May for Aquarius? May only the highest forces be present at this reading to ensure that the truth be told. What is happening in May? What does Aquarius need to know? Okay, Aquarius, let's see what's happening for you in May. All this indecision. Wow, oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God, this is wonderful. Okay, Aquarius, May looks great for you. Here you have the Hierophant. You are, well, the Hierophant represents someone who has a lot of wisdom to share. It represents a teacher, the teacher, the shaman, the priest. You have knowledge. You have wisdom of your life experiences. You have a lot, of, you have a gift. To give and your gift is your wisdom and your teaching ability and you may have you may be involved with the with the hierophant this is the present situation the hierophant sometimes represents conservative thinking or, or a conservative organization and Aquarians are anything but conservative so there's a conflict there you're involved in you may be uh, working at a place where you have all these innovative ideas, but they're just so conservative that they're kind of stifling your creativity. They're stifling your innov innovative thinking. So you just feel um, held back in that way, that they're too stuffy. They're too rigid. They need to open up and be more cutting edge. Um, and you have so much to offer, but you feel like you're fighting a brick wall because they're so rigid. They have these rules and regulations. And so you could be, but at the same time, you want to do the right thing. So you might even be in a relationship that, with someone like that, someone very rigid in their thinking, not open to change. So this could be a work or love situation, but... Um, and then, so now you have the Two of Swords. And maybe you're thinking about going into something new, moving on to something new, or taking a different path. But you're not talking about it. You're keeping your thoughts to yourself and your feelings to yourself. So you need to, this is a card of needing to lay your cards on the table, needing to have a conversation with someone. Um, you may not be be, um, you might be, if you want to resolve this 
standoff or this stalemate, you have to be the one to make the first move. You have to approach these conservative people or this conservative person and share your ideas and share your thoughts and share your feelings. It's like you're waiting for them to contact you. They're not going to contact you. You have to contact them. You have to drop your guard. You have to take that first step. In the past, you had the Seven of Swords. So you may have been kind of secretive about some of your plans. Maybe you're not being very transparent about what your plans are. Maybe you felt like you've had to keep to yourself. Maybe you're afraid someone's going to steal your ideas, or you're afraid, or maybe you're stealing someone's ideas. This is a theft card. So, um, maybe you feel like someone's trying to steal something from you, or take something from you. Or you're afraid that if you tell your plans, that someone else will try and steal your ideas in some way. So you're keeping things under wraps. Um, you're being secretive. So you might be te saying one thing and to the person and then complaining behind their back instead of being honest. Instead of, instead of talking to the person you need to talk to, you're talking to everybody else. So you need to stop that and have that conversation, have that difficult conversation. Or maybe you even need to apologize. Maybe someone will be apologizing to you and returning whatever they... Whatever it was that they stole, they're going to be returning. Here's the Ace of Cups. So you may have started a new project or a new relationship. Something that you're really emotional about. So it could be a new beginning in love. In a relationship. Maybe a new way of loving or a new way of approaching a relationship. But there's some new love interest that's recently affected your life. And it may be connected with your career in some way. Because I see career success, you being recognized for your abilities and your talents. But I also see this love that's, in, that's making you, bringing you joy. There's like a new hope, a new beginning. The only problem here is the future card, this Four of Pentacles. Now, on the one hand, this career success is going to bring you more financial security. So money is going to be coming in. You're going to feel safer in that way. But this is another card. This is a card of the person who's too controlling or wanting to control the outcome. So you have to let go of your need to control. Don't be so... Don't be a micromanager. Don't be um, afraid to give of your resources, give of yourself, give of your love, because if you keep holding your talents to yourself, you're not sharing. This is a card of someone who doesn't like to share. So you have to share. Don't be, don't have a scarcity mentality. This is the, go with the flow. If there's a new love in your life, don't be afraid to show your feelings. Don't be afraid to give. Um, and if it's not love, if it's some kind of career thing, don't try to control the outcome. Share with the group. Don't try to hold on to all the glory. Like, this is my idea. This is my thing. Don't, you know, start trying to own everything. Um, operate more like the Knights of the Round Table. It's our project. It's our Think in terms of us and we rather than me and mine. Um, here you have the magician. You have, you're talented. You have the talent. You have all the tools you need for success. And you're going to be experiencing success in May. Look at the world card. Things are going to start happening in May. You're going to feel like things are coming together. Um, you might even embark on a whole new adventure because the world is the end of, it's the last card in the major arcana. Look at all these major cards. One, two, three, four, five. The world is the last card in the major arcana. And the fool is the first card. So you're ending one cycle. Everything comes to an end, but it's a victory. It's a wholeness, a fulfillment. And now you're ready to take something to the next level. 
So maybe you've completed a project and it was well received and you received a lot of praise and people are recognizing your contribution and your talent. Um, maybe you've achieved something in a relationship, a goal that you wanted, that you set for yourself. And now you're ready for the next level, the Fool card. You're ready for something new. So you may be embarking on something, some aspect that is putting you in an environment that you're uncomfortable with or you're unfamiliar with. The new, the fool is a new adventure, totally new, totally um, unlike anything you've experienced before. So you can't call on your past experience. It's not like, oh, I've been doing this work for years. I could do it in my sleep. No, with the fool, it's more. Wow, this is all new. I don't know if I even can do this. Can I do this? And so you have doubts. But let me tell you, you have the magician here. This is in your doubt sector. You have the talent. You have the tools. Have faith in yourself. Maybe you need to go back to school and learn. You know, this is also a teaching card, a school education. So it's possible that with this new opportunity, you may be learning some new things things that you've never had to do before, so you have to learn some new things. But that's okay. It's exciting. This is an exciting time for you. You're, you're on a whole new path. Um, you don't have to be sneaky anymore. You, can, you don't have to be controlling. You don't have to keep your guard up. Um, things are changing. You're... you're Destiny is changing in a positive way. You have the judgment card here. The judgment card is a wake-up call. You're, you're, you're waking up. It's like a spiritual awakening. You're realizing, you know what? Maybe in the past, I didn't always do things in the right way. Maybe I was too secretive. Or maybe I was too... Um, I didn't act in the right way. And now I see the error of my ways and I want to change. And with the Judgment card, you're working on yourself. You're working on um, your weaknesses and trying to turn them into strengths. You're, you're wanting to be a better person. You're wanting to improve in some way. Uh, and not just in a um, career way. You want to be a better person. So it's not just about, yeah, I want a better job, I want a higher title, whatever, more money. You want to be... You want the work that you do to have a spiritual component. You want to feel that you're part of something. Not just, you know, you're not interested in just selfish materialism. Um, you want to make changes that are going to be good for everyone, not just yourself. So the judgment card, you're starting to feel strong. You, you've been working on yourself and you're changing. And whenever we work on ourselves and we change who we are on the inside... Our world changes on the outside. And that's the only way to really make change is from within first. Because you have no control over anything out there. And as a matter of fact, whatever is out there is really just a reflection of who you are in here, in your heart. So if you want to change your world, if your world is not right, change your inner self. And you'll be amazed at how the outer self the outer environment just kind of falls into place. It's just a mirror. What you're looking, what you see in others, is exists in you. What you see in the external world exists within your own heart. You're just not recognizing it or willing to see it. So the universe is showing it to you through others. So anyway, with the judgment card, you're making progress. You are going to be changing jobs, changing relationships. Um, you're feeling stronger, you're embarking on a whole new adventure, and it promises to be a success. And you have the talent to make it a success. The only advice is drop your guard, communicate, be more transparent, and stop trying to control every aspect. Go with the flow. You have the opportunity for a whole new beginning. Go with the flow. See where the river takes you. Don't worry too much about the details where you want to know every step of the way and you want to control every step. That's just going to ruin it. 
just go with the flow. Let let the your intuition be your guide. The fool is also about following your intuition, being led by divine guidance into something new that is a good fit for you. So embrace the new in May. Don't be afraid to embrace the new. Don't be afraid to change some habits, whether it's health by eating healthier, exercising, or changing the way you relate to people, you, you know, whatever you see as a defect within yourself that needs improvement, you have the power to change and to be a better person. So um, good luck to you, Aquarius, and I hope you are successful in everything that you attempt to do. And I know you will be because you have the talent. Um, so just you, you, you're, you have good things coming. Don't be afraid to break, embrace the new. Um, you're on, on the edge of a new cycle. Um, and so I wish you luck and I wish you love. And I hope you enjoy your month of May. I hope you enjoyed this reading. And I will talk to you again soon. Thank you, Aquarius.